So thank you, PSG Group, and particularly the Rutul Goklani and uh, Dr. Darmendra. I am very thankful to both of them for inviting me as a speaker. And uh, PSG as a whole group has done the successful and great event year by year. So I am I wish that the group continuously doing the same events year by year. Uh, today my talk is pregnancy with complication in GDM. So here I am presenting the case that a 29 year old female patient that is referred by our dear gynecologist, patient is primary gravida with a 20 week of pregnancy. Her glycemic profile are disturbed like A1C of 6.4, fasting sugar is 123, post prandial is about 168. Her body mass index is about 27 before the conceptions. And now the patient has a polyhydramnios as well as a baby is last for gestational age. There is a no particular significant about the medication, past medication history, or there is a no significant thing in the family history. So overall, the case of uh, gestational diabetes with a complication like a polyhydramnios and last for gestational age. Uh, our gynecological uh, gynecologic friend uh, interested to uh, interested for the team management and referred the case to the diabetologist. So I really happy that. Uh, Team approach, particularly in case of GDM as well as in the pre-existing uh, type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes in a with a pregnancy is very important aspect. Uh, what is the difference between the GDM and pre-existing type, type 2 diabetes? I want to, I want to highlight that. So main important point is that the level of glycemia, the burden of glycemia, the, that in case of pre-existing diabetes, fetus is going to burden, uh, going to expose the to the hyperglycemia from time of conception till the delivery, but it is not so in case of the GDF. So particularly uh, pre-existing diabetes patient facing the higher morbidity as, as well as the complications. So like a uh, congenital malformation or teratogenicity is more common. But by saying that GDM is also not spared with other complications, uh, it has also its own complication due to the hyperglycemia. So are there any data that hyperglycemia has complication? So there, there is a one important study that is a HEPO study document that the, there is a strong and continuous association of maternal glucose level that is below the diagnostic of diabetes with increased birth weight and increased cord blood serum C peptide level. So increased the serum C peptide level is a marker of insulin resistance and insulin resistance is a pathognomic features of gestational diabetes mellitus. So GDM is not only associated with the increase in the birth weight of a baby, large baby, but there are the battery of complications with uh, gestational diabetes like preeclampsia, premature delivery, primary caesarean delivery, shoulder dystocia, intensive neonatal care or uh, other complications as shown here. So the complications are documented in the HEPO study, but there are the data from the various regions across the globe saying that same, uh, same complications for here. I am quoting one uh, data presented by the Ethiopia. Even the small country has a data that GDM patient have a face, a GDM patient facing the comorbidities like a caesarean delivery, pregnancy induced hypertension, induction of labor, premature rupture of membrane and so on. So here the data are also supporting the HEPO study. So overall we can say that if there is a hyperglycemia above the normal range, then it is then the patient is going to face the complications. How to diagnose uh, the gestational, how to di uh, diagnose the GDM? Yeah, usually in India we uh, prefer the deep sea test. And we know about that and what are, what are the criteria for the diagnosing the GDM is also we are very well, uh, uh, very well aware of, of that. The important point that I would like to highlight that it is a logical that presence of hyperglycemia is associated with complication. Similarly, it is a logically true that if we reduce the hyperglycemia, we can get the better outcome. So is there any data? A course trial, it is there where the 
treatment of gestational diabetes reduces the serious perinatal morbidity and there is an improvement in the woman's health related quality of life so even the correction of the hyperglycemia gives a good maternal outcome so in our case patient has polyhydramnios as well as the large baby that is a large for the gestational week and there is a hyperglycemia so overall the team approach for the management of obstetric part as well as the diabetes part is very important so basic main part of the management is the lifestyle modification diet exercise and the drug medication that is insulin or oral antidiabetic drugs and lastly the monitoring this is not sufficient for the overall management i would like to emphasize that patient education is very important as one hand cannot clap similarly the without patient education and involvement we cannot offer or ensuring for uh, get the uh, optimal outcome so it is better to encourage the pregnant woman to take charge of her own health and well being most pregnant women want the best for their unborn babies so the education provides them the tool to achieve this goal what should be the component of education so it is a knowledge about the diabetes as well as the gdm but it is not it should not be uh, end here the importance of the regular follow up importance of the compliance with diet exercise and medications as well as the how to store insulin how to administer the insulin and technique regarding that sick day rule for the sick patient as well as what to do in case of hypoglycemia and importance of retesting glucose after delivery these are all the important thing that should include in patient education uh from the monitoring aspect i would like to say that frequent monitoring of glycemic control and, uh, and prompt changes in the management are essential to ensure good outcome so the options are here like self monitoring of blood glucose that is smbg hb1c cgms as well as the serum fructosamine assay in detail the cgm is very well explained by dr arun shankar uh, so i would uh, i heard i have to say nothing uh, smbg is uh, i can say that it is easily available it is approachable for the every patient as well as the it is a cost effective so uh, according the need of the patient we can ask for the patient to do one sugar per day to the three profile four profile five profile or even seven profile per day it is depend upon upon the need of the patient there should be the monitoring part also include the fetal abdominal circumference which is a marker of maternal glycemic control so better rapport with a gynecological friend and better communications gives the uh, idea about how we are going further in case of the gdm as well as we have to also address the other comorbidity if it is there like hypertension thyroid dysfunction and we have to also address or we have to keep in mind that hypoglycemia and ketosis should be avoided uh when we considering the therapy of a gdm patient the glycemic control very well uh, uh, can, very well we cannot get without medical nutrition therapy so the ament is the first line of management uh full it should fulfill minimum nutritional recommendations and uh, ament should achieve glycemic goals without weight loss or undue weight gain and we have to avoid ketosis what should be the component of the uh, ament meal plan should be tailor made and easy to understand and follow small frequent meals are ideal or avoid the hypoglycemia and starvos starvation ketosis avoid prolonged fasting bed time snack is advisable to prevent the development of ketosis at night and ensure adequate hydration and avoid fruits regarding the diet and mo diet mo modification lifestyle modification uh, and exercise dr malay has mentioned very well in his slide so i is uh, shortly describe the component of each of that physical activity plan physical activity of 30 to 45 minute per day is recommended it is better to avoid sedentariness Comp uh, activities that increase the blood pressure should be avoided like lifting the heavy objects upper body resistant training has been shown to reduce the glucose level in the third trimester and if the physical activity is restricted by the obstetrician then it is better to avoid the patient should adhere to the to this advice if the mnt is failed to achieve the glycemia then insulin the treatment of the choice so we can wait up to the 2 weeks if sugars fasting of more than 95 
and two hours persist about more than 120, then it is better to switch over to the insulin. If uh, at the time of diagnosis, blood sugar if, uh, fasting that is more than 120 and two hours if it is more than 200, we can straightforward start the insulin therapy. And during the whole therapy, target should be according to DPC guideline, fasting should remain 90 or below that and two hours should remain 120 or below that. So insulin is the mainstay of the therapy and uh, we know about the uh, various type of insulin depending upon the time action profile, the insulin preparations, we can categorize in, in them into the short acting insulin, intermediate or long acting insulin. So Lispro, Aspart and Glulison are the rapid acting, regular insulin are the short acting, NPH and Datamirs, uh, we can say that they are intermediate acting and Glargin, Degludec and Glargin U300 are the long acting insulin. But all insulin are not approved for the for the use uh, in in the GDM patient. Uh, the approval given to the some of them are regular insulin that have a category B, uh, short acting insulin like Aspart and uh, Lispro that has also the same B category. But glulysin has a C category, so it is better to our glulysin. NPH and Indetamil both are intermediate acting and both are both have a uh, B category approval. So we are using usually the detamer insulin as well as the short acting uh, insulin, either regular or either the S part. Uh, Degludec and the long uh, and Degludec insulin and the Glargin U300 are uh, have a C category C, so they they are avoided. Recently, the Glargin U U100, which is a previously C category, now it is removed from that category. But there is a no human pregnancy data, so it is still not to be avoided. But there is a, some paper about the Glargin U100 I would like to highlight here. So uh, here the paper published by the author Dr. Pratap Jethwani, Dr. Bansi Sabu, and so on. What is the conclusion that uh, use of insulin glargin during the pregnancy, insulin glargin can be continued safely during the pregnancy in women who are already taking it prior to the pregnancy and have achieved good glycemic control with it. However, we require preferably randomized control trial or larger prospective observational studies to establish it as a first line or preferred vision for management of hyperglycemia during the pregnancy. So now there are the some data for the usage of glycemic U100 uh, in the pregnancy, but it is still better to avoid. If insulin, uh, alternate to insulin, there are the oral hyperglycemic therapy. Metformin has a B category and we are using the metformin during the pregnancy, but other medications still we, we have to avoid. So are there any data for the safety and efficacy uh, of metformin in the during the gestational diabetes? One, one study that is a MIG trial is there, uh, which is mentioning that in women with gestational diabetes, metformin uh, is not associated with increased perinatal complication as compared with the insulin. So we can say that in metformin is safe during the uh, uh, gestational diabetes management in case of GDM patient. Here, the one of the uh, follow-up study of a MIG trial, that is a MIG tofu. Also, uh, Dr. Padmanab, yes. uh, sorry to interrupt, but please try to finish in two minutes and 30 First, seconds. Uh, now, last slide, last two, three slides. So, okay, MIG tofu okay. is also supporting the same way that uh, children exposed to the metformin had a larger measure of subcutaneous fat, but overall body fat content is remained the same as that of a patient treated with insulin alone. So, safety data of metformin is there. Uh, Glebin clamide has a no data, uh, has a limited data. Safety is still uh, safety is still not there. So, we uh, therefore its use cannot be recommended as well as same for the other uh, oral antidiabetic drugs. So their, uh, their use cannot be recommended during the pregnancy time. In our case, uh, patient is delivered at full term with a uh, baby weight of 3.2 kg without any complication. So overall, uh, what is what are the take homes in women with a GDM? MND is the first line of management. If glycemic target are not achieved with MND, uh, pharmacotherapy is indicated, insulin is the treatment of choice, and metformin can be introduced if glycemia not at goal or higher insulin is required. Uh, thank you for listening.